Good. Good. All right, let's get cracking. Uh, Dobbo, on the team, we've got six changes. Um, and then a couple of new guys making their first appearance of the competition on the bench. I think it's just one in the forwards and then five in the back line. So if you could just run through the thinking behind the selection there. Um, yeah, I'll just try to go over to my mind. Uh... That's the halfbacks and the centres are new, and then Edwell on the wing, and then Ernst is the only one in the pack. Yeah, it's like, we, across the tour, we've said you're going to rotate positions where we've got some depth, like uh, centre, halfback, and lock. So Ernst, yeah, Ernst has come back in there. Also, we weren't so sure what the outcome of the address Smith disciplinary would be. We only get that today uh, or late last night. So that's why we couldn't choose him. So that's an easy one at Ernst. J, uh, JJ Kotze coming there is a rotation for Andre Huko. He's also a young hooker we think has got a massive future. Um, uh, Steph Unger has got a, he's got a, um, he's got an injury. He won't make it with ankle. He won't make it this week. Should be back for next week. So Paul comes back in there. Um, Marnie's got a hip pointer, but Tim Spiel wasn't deserving and do a start anyway. So that's the change there. Um, likewise at centre, we've got four really high quality centres. So yeah, Juba was an easy one for this week, and we thought on the four G pitch, which is fast, suit his game. So that was, and also his hundredth cap is very exciting for us. And Edward just recovered for any well, thrilled with us last week. I think he's making a lot of progress. Um, probably play again, we will play again on this tour, but uh, Edward comes back for this one. Uh, just a word on the on the man next to you there. Obviously, it's quite a big occasion. Not many people have made 100 caps for the Stormers, and obviously, he had a bit of a break in between, uh, but also maybe just a bit on what he's added since he's come back. Yeah, it, it brings a lot in leader, his, his leadership, energy, professionalism, you know, the way he studies the game. Um, I I think it's got a really good influence on younger guys. I saw him sitting with two younger players the other day in the in the restaurant late going over some plays. So that's that's really we really, bring. You know, he's obviously a great province and Storm is legend, but what he's how he's teaching and passing on knowledge for us is very important. And as I suggested earlier, I look forward to seeing him on that fast field tomorrow. Yeah, for sure, Juba. Uh, from your side, I think the the guys with the hundred caps for the Stormers. It's it's Scala, Sia, Franz, Kitsi. Um, then it's Andres Becker, Jean de Villiers, and Peter Grant. So those are obviously uh, big names, but also guys you played with throughout your career. So what does it feel like for you to join them as the kind of centurion? Yeah, it's easy. I must say it's a massive honor to be, to, to be part of that um, part of that group. Um, it took me a, a couple of years to get there uh, since I made my debut in 2010. Um, but yeah, it's exciting times for me. Just to you know, it's been a, it's been a long journey. It's been a tough long journey with a lot of hard works and ups and downs and just it's just awesome to be to be sitting here and and, and joining that group um so really excited for for this opportunity uh, that comes tomorrow uh, and, and yeah so i'm uh, looking forward to it in terms of i think about the early part of your career the storm has always toured very quite well um you know down under uh, and always had a great kind of spirit and and, and really gave a good account of themselves away from home what's it what's it been like on this european tour obviously quite different um and and just the the youngsters that you've been kind of mentoring, how's how's that gone? Yeah, obviously it's a, it's way different to what we used to um, traveling to New Zealand and, and Australia. Um, so yeah, it's something to adapt to. It's a new competition for all of us, um, but everyone is so excited and positive for for this tour. It's it's exciting, you know, to see uh, different things, you know, to challenge ourselves in in, in this competition, so in different environment conditions and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a, it's it's 30, 30, 40 guys that's that's buying into one. To one goal. Um, so obviously we got two games left, and our, our biggest goal now is to to, to walk away with these two um, Ws. Um, but all in all, saying that yeah, it's 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 a process, and we got to take this one in front of us. And that's Edinburgh. Edinburgh is a good team um, that played some good rugby this this past two past two weeks, and especially in their preseason games as well. So um, yeah, it's going to be a massive challenge tomorrow. So I mentioned the four G pitch. I mean, you must be one of the only players in the squad with with experience of that. Um, what what can the guys expect? Yeah, lucky enough, there's a couple of guys, you know, Brock Harris played here and then some guys that played uh, um, in the um, Pro, Pro 16 um, back in the game with the Kings and, and that. Right. But yeah, I've, I've, I've got a lot of experience with that, uh, playing, you know, playing Saracens in, in the Premiership and, and Worcester, Worcester Warriors, Newcastle and those boys with those 4G pitches. Um, yeah, it's a bit different. Uh, it's got a bit different challenges, um, but it's also exciting as well, especially for the type of band that we, we want to play that we're playing at the moment. And so, so we as a team are just looking forward to that, and hopefully, hopefully we can we can get it going on the pitch. Great, guys! If you want to stick your hands up, you've got questions for these two. Go for it, Stephen. Far away. 
Thanks, guys. Nice to see you. And uh, Joan, uh, many congratulations on your achievement. Um, Dobbo, obviously, um, Audrey is a, is a big blow. I mean, that, that goes without saying. Um, can you just uh, verbalize the um, effect on your team in, in the short term? Because, I mean, obviously, there would be a couple of two meter guys in the starting lineup, another, another one on the bench, and you, I guess you're back to one specialist lock now again. So, how are you guys dealing uh, with this uh, setback? Yeah, I must say, this is a setback. Um, I think once he got sighted, we started to prepare the team without him because we never knew what the outcome was. So we would probably had him down to the bench anyway. But it is a hell of a blow to me. To my, to my mind, you know, the guy hadn't played, obviously, at that sort of level before in his life. He was outstanding against Munster. He was, excuse me, he was very, 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 very good. So it is a blow to the team. We are thin at lock. You know, if some armed men, Marat or something went down, now we would be in real trouble. We're down to one lock and, uh, as I say, a retreated flank, as you suggested, Blank. So it's a blow, but I think um, in European rugby, Ernst and uh, Justin Basson, I think will give us, you know, will give us the necessary weight we need, which is a, it's a lot weight focused here. So um, that should, yeah, that should, that should plug the hole. But it is a blow for the team, no question. Given how good Andre is, we see him as a player with a huge future. Well, Stephen, happy call. Got a question? Um, thanks, Mike. Uh, Double with the relaxation of the travel uh, uh, restrictions placed on South African players and, and everybody, it most certainly makes your options uh, a lot bigger to bring guys back on an urgent basis. Are you looking to bring guys back from Monday? No, not planned, but um, it's not out the question given what's happened with Adrian and given the relaxation of travel bans. You know, so that, that is something we'll have. We will have a plan for, you know, I don't think we'll do it by, unless there was a cataclysmic injury or injury run, because I think you want to be loyal to the group and stuff. But obviously, if we shorten a position and let's say that's, uh, let's say that's a lock and let's say a guy like Marvin Ori was available, then obviously we'd have a conversation around that given the relaxation. But uh, hopefully we won't need to do that. Jan, got a question? Hi, Jabba, John. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying Europe. Um, John, my question is twofold. First of all, what are the aspects this week you worked on that you think that, that need or could improve? And what do you expect from Edinburgh? Um, look, the aspects that, we, that we've that worked on that have probably been similar the way we've seen ourselves lose these first two games to our mind was giving away penalties in the middle of the field. And then not being able to defend their 22 entries have come as a result, you know, whether it's, you know, I think it's a remarkable young and in two games, there's only been one sort of earned entry, if you like, that was Benetton's first try. Munster never played themselves into our 22. So we have to be more disciplined there. And then we also be a bit at stopping pick and goes and the malls once they in our 22. So that's probably what we've worked on in terms of that defensively, you know, like what we need to get better at. Where we're excited about and where we're planning for Edinburgh in the, in the, in the 5G pitch is a fast field. Um, and, the, and the way we've been attacking lately, I think, started towards the later in the Curry Cup with speed and directness and offloads. And um, I think people have enjoyed that style of rugby. It's certainly the style of rugby our players enjoy playing. And hopefully in the 5G, we'll get going. I mean, Edinburgh have changed quite a bit. You know, they, from, uh, they were a very much a sort of set-piece based, mauling, kicking team. And they're now playing a much more open game. So this could be quite a shootout tomorrow. I think they, yeah, they, they're prepared to move the ball from pretty much anywhere. So, um, and we also want to attack. So it should be, it should be quite a spectacle. What is the weather uh, expectations for tomorrow? I think the weather report, you just copy paste here, yeah, Gray with chance of rain, but the, um, the, the uh, no, the weather, it, looks, it, looks, it, looks, it looks just overcast, but the, the big thing is the 5G pitch. Yeah, this is one of the newer 5G pitches, 4G, 4G pitches. Uh, it's one of the newer ones and they make a difference when they're still new. Um, in terms of speed, uh, you know, Tim Sweels sort of got another guy's experience, but Juba's got much, much more experience. But certainly, um, with, with apparently a big difference to us is the forward play. Um, you don't have time to sort of get yourself back into a scrum. If you go, you go. Um, you don't have time to sort of dig your way into stopping a all. If the other team get the rumble on you, you, you tend to go. So um, we actually trained deliberately on a 4G in Limerick. At the University of Limerick had one. We stayed there to train on a 4G to get used to it, and we're going out onto the Edinburgh one this afternoon. Stephen, next question. 
Thanks. Um, firstly, just to Daba, sorry, I just want to check is, does Adams come back as the captain? And no, then, so, uh, no. Pardon? So someone's the captain, stays the captain. Someone retains the captaincy. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, Joan, uh, just to you, what is it that you would still like to achieve in your career uh, at uh, Western Province and the Stormers? Yeah, for, for me, it was all, uh, I like a challenge, and it's always been a challenge for, for me, you know, just being part of the Stormers on, since day one. Um, you know, ever since I left the UK, I, I left at 97 caps, and the club always was, was hanging over my head. So just to come back, you know, um, um, getting this opportunity, you know, getting opportunity to play 100 caps, for, for such a big brand and a brand that I loved uh, since I was a little kid and, and you know, going into those, in the, in the legacy uh, type of field with those eight type of guys that, that uh, played 100 caps is just, just awesome. Um, and, and it's something I'm going to cherish for, uh, for a long time. And um, yeah, yeah, I can still remember, you know, my first cap in 2010, I can still remember playing my 15th against the Sh Sharks and, you know, scoring a try. So for me, tomorrow is about making some good memories and then taking a bit by week and game by game. So I'm not the guy that wants to look too far ahead, but for me, it's very special just to, to get over this hurdle and then hopefully add some, some many, many more depending on, uh, oh, God bless me.